I am Michael Santos with Earning Freedom and the Prison Professor. Uh, strike that. Welcome to the Earning Freedom Podcast, the uh, Success After Prison Podcast. I am Michael Santos with MichaelSantos.com and PrisonProfessor.com. And I'm really excited today because I'm going to be sharing with you more of my book, Success After Prison, How I Built Assets Worth $1 Million Within Two Years of Release from, from 26 Years Inside, and How You Can Succeed Too. For those who are new to the podcast, new to the webinar or, or YouTube channel or whatever, I just want you to know I create this, these episodes in 20-minute segments, basically, because first of all, I want you to be able to listen to it on your on your iPod or on um, your podcast as you're driving. Make it simple for you. But I also want to make it very easy to digest for people who are in prison. Um, those are that's my primary audience: people who are in struggle, people who are in schools who have been identified as possibly going into prison. I want these individuals to see that the decisions that they are making today can have a direct influence on their prospects for success, both in prison and beyond. And that's what this course is about. If you'd like to get a free digital download of the book, very easy to do. Just visit michaelsantos.com, uh, enter your email address, and it will automatically be sent to you. You can get all this information in the digital format for free. If you want to buy a copy for somebody who doesn't have access to the internet, doesn't have access to iTunes, no problem at all. You can order it right from my website at michaelsantos.com and a paperback copy will be sent out right away. If you are listening to this as a podcast, please rate and review the show, subscribe so that we can get more people listening to these messages that anybody can overcome struggle, anybody can achieve a higher potential. If you're on YouTube, subscribe, whatever channel you're using, whether it's Facebook, like the page, Twitter, follow me at Michael G. Santos, um, uh, LinkedIn, you know, just some, simply uh, connect with me. I connect with everybody. Why? Because networks are powerful. That's what I try and teach for this program. Now we're going to get right back into this uh, book. So I'll continue reading it, and I uh, just hope that uh, you'll you will support the work by by sponsoring it. Supporting it. it's free, as I said. I've always said I give away more content than I sell. Why is it? Because I believe in the power of overcoming struggle. I never ask anybody to do anything that I didn't do. That's why I want you to just you know stick with me on this on this program, and you'll see how decisions that you're making while you're in in a, in, a, in a difficult or challenging circumstance can really open enormous opportunities for you in the uh, weeks, months, years, decades to come. And uh, that's the message that I offer. I also suggest, as I said last time, if you are in struggle, start thinking. Start thinking about your avatars. Start thinking about where you're going to go. Start thinking about how you are going to emerge successfully because the sooner you begin asking those questions, the sooner you're going to be able to transition into a successful life. So in the last chapter, I was talking about I was at the end game of my journey. I'd already served. I was coming to the end of my sentence. And uh, I'm going to tell you about what Carol and I did as we got to that approach. So as we approached the end of my term, we had to figure out where we wanted to live. Since I served longer than a quarter century already, I didn't have roots anywhere. It didn't matter where I would go. We chose California because I had built a strong support network that would be easier to leverage from a large state. Further, California was a big market, and I needed to be in a big market. I mean, it was either going to be really, at the end of the day, I was really contemplating New York or California, uh, but the state of California had some significant challenges with its prison system, and I wanted to have a role in trying to improve outcomes there. Since we wanted to live in a place that offered the best opportunity, California seemed perfect. Besides the opportunity, I really liked the weather. But I had another reason to choose California as the place where Carol and I would begin our life together. Toward the end of my sentence, I met a, a guy, his name is Justin Paperni. He's become a good friend of mine, but at the time, um, he was just coming into prison. He was a former stockbroker who served a relatively brief sentence for violating securities laws. A lot of white-collar guys go into prison for, for little periods of time. But, uh, you know, Justin and I became close friends. His uh, conviction meant that he would need to create a new career for himself upon release. And, you know, at the time, in 2008, when we met, you know, the nation's economy was sinking. It was, you know, the worst possible time to be getting out of prison and looking for a job. And, uh, you know, Justin and I just started, as we became friends, I started asking him some questions, using that whole Socratic questioning dialogue 
that really transformed my life that I believe can transform your life. And to start asking Justin, you try to use the same approach, you know. Again, don't ask anybody to do, don't do anything that you wouldn't do yourself. So I asked Justin, I said, to help him see the challenges that awaited him, I, I just started asking him questions. I said, how do you plan on earning a living when you get out of here? You know, and, uh, you know, he was rightfully concerned. You know, the unemployment market was, you know, unemployment rates were through the roof at the time. And he was a felon. You know, he couldn't go back into his industry. He lost his livelihood. So how is the market going to respond to your conviction? Are you asking yourself these questions? And I'm asking this to you if you're in prison. Are you asking yourself these questions? How is the market going to respond to your conviction? Why would a manager hire you when so many people without felony convictions are looking for employment? How are you going to answer that question? Be ready. In what ways could you turn your experience of going through the criminal justice system into a strength? Another big question. Is it possible? Is it possible? I can tell you without a doubt it's possible. Without a doubt, I use my, you see, I'm here on public, right? You're, so you're, you may be watching this show inside of a prison or a jail, but it's on YouTube. It's on my Facebook page. It's on my Twitter account. It's on LinkedIn. It's everywhere. Anybody who searches my name is going to find out. And the first thing they're going to see is I did 26 years in prison. Why? Because I've been able to turn it into a strength for me. I've caught, I've been able to turn it into a situation where I can ask people, don't judge me because of the bad decisions that sent me to prison. No, 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 no. We all make bad decisions. We all face struggle. But we don't always navigate our way out successfully. You know, there's an old Chinese proverb. If you want to know the road ahead, ask somebody who's coming back. So I've been into the depths of despair. I've been in struggle, but I was able to muster the strength to make it through just like you can do it. Just like you can do it. If you can reject the negativity, if you can tune out the criminal lifestyle, if you can tune out criminal associations and you can focus only on what does it mean to become successful, you can start asking Socratic questions. What would my avatars expect from me? What can I do today? to position myself for a better tomorrow. When you start training your mind to ask those kinds of questions, you truly can move the needle in your life. You don't wait for anybody else to do it. You do it yourself. And you do it every day. And what do I mean when I say you do it every day? I mean every day. I mean weekends. I mean holidays. You never go off track. That's what makes the difference. So I started asking Justin, my friend, those questions, and uh, you know they helped him figure out a problem. Once we identified that there was a problem, we could figure out a solution. And what was the problem? That millions of people are in trouble. Millions of formerly incarcerated individuals would face the same challenges that were about to complicate Justin's life. Millions. Prison isn't the only problem. We saw a massive problem. That, also tra- that would also transpire after prison. People would need to transition into the job market. And so I suggested to Justin, join efforts with me so that we can begin right now. Let's make and create programs and services that will improve the outcomes for the formerly incarcerated population. Let's create programs that will help those formerly incarcerated people transition into the job market. Let's spread awareness to people who are going into the prison system so they can position themselves for the best possible outcome. So that they can position themselves to come back with their dignity intact, ready to resume their life as a law-abiding, contributing citizen, not judged for the bad decisions that got them locked up, but rather for how they responded to those challenges. So when Jess had completed his prison term, he established a nonprofit that he generously and graciously named the Michael G. Santos Foundation. Now, we wrote a plan. Then he began writing proposals for grants to fund our work. And those efforts led us to receiving a two-year grant from the California Wellness Foundation for, as I recall, it was $140,000. And we got this when I was still locked up. So the foundation agreed to provide resources that would pay Justin a salary to manage the foundation and pay me to write literature and programs that we could use to teach strategies for overcoming struggle. And through our work, we anticipated that we could improve outcomes of our nation's criminal justice system. Why? Because everything we teach is something we've lived. 
That's what distinguishes our program from other types of programs. We're not a psychologist who writes about what's going right. We're not, you know, a business leader who talks about what does it take to overcome. No, 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 no. I, I, I was in jail for 26 years. I've walked through puddles of blood. I've gone through prisons of every security level. I've dealt with all of the negativity and yet come back strong. That's what I want for you. It doesn't happen by accident. Follow these principles of the Earning Freedom Mastermind course and you will see how your life is going to change. Now, I had I not been exposed to Socrates, had I not learned to ask the right types of questions early on during my prison journey, I would not have been able to figure out a plan to guide me through the decades. And without a plan, I wouldn't have been able to educate myself or build credentials. And if I hadn't earned credentials, I wouldn't have been able to persuade the California Wellness Foundation to believe in the vision expressed through our grant requests. I'd need to continue that same strategy after release. And as I move forward, you're going to see how I did it. So you're going to also see how other people who have succeeded have followed this same strategy. In fact, if you listen to the Earning Freedom podcast episodes where I feature formerly incarcerated individuals or extraordinarily successful business and community leaders, you will see that they also follow this pattern. Setting clear goals characterized my entire journey through prison. And when I came to the end of my sentence, I knew that I had to set goals that would ease my transition into society. At a minimum, I wanted sufficient savings to sustain me for the first year of my transition into society. I wanted a job waiting for me. I wanted a clear plan to guide me through the first year. And those are the same types of questions that I urged Justin to start asking very early on in his prison sentence. And as a consequence of his asking those questions, we were able to come up with a, a strategy to use our time effectively. And so that Justin, when he walked out, he had his own book. He had his own lesson plans. He was able to launch his own venture, his own business, in the worst economy of our lifetime. And he launched the, the Michael G. Sanchez Foundation, which has gone on to influence tens of thousands of people across the country. And I'm very grateful to him for, for helping me along that path because he allowed me to really advance the ball in getting myself ready for success upon release. So I'm hopeful that readers in custody will see the relationship between decisions that you're making right now and the success that can come your way in the months, years, and decades to come. Those who make principled, values-based, goal-oriented decisions have a far greater chance of success than those who simply allow the calendar pages to turn. There's no question about that. As a consequence of skills I developed during the first decade of my imprisonment, I found ways to add value in society. In fact, I could add value for other people in prison by helping them write their books. Although prison rules prevented me from running a business, I created opportunities to write for publication. And by understanding how the system operated, I could work with other people inside to write their stories, contributing to a methodical plan that would ease my transition back into society. And executing that strategy every day allowed me to return to society strong. I mean, Carol and I had more than $85,000 in the bank on the day of my release. More importantly, we had a plan to guide our future. So the final takeaways here, the final takeaways in this chapter, is I'd like to say that I originated the patterns of success I wrote about in my books, but in truth, I learned them from masterminds. Nelson Mandela taught me far more than I could ever teach you. I'm just trying to crystallize what I learned from them and hopefully give you some, some, some ammunition to go look for more masterminds like Mandela and Viktor Frankl and uh, Socrates and Jesus and Gandhi and, Man and Muhammad and so many others. Malcolm X, learn from people who faced a struggle and figure out how you can use these lessons to empower yourself, whatever you're going through right now. Lessons from masterminds empowered me through the journey, and they can absolutely empower you. And in writing my books, regardless of which book it is, whether it's success, whether it's triumph, whether it's prison, whether it's the big ones, earning freedom, inside, they all share the same message. 
And that's a message of a deliberate plan. In writing my books, all I did was rewrite the importance of applying lessons from the world's leaders. Even in the context of a prison experience, those lessons advanced prospects for success. And through those books, I documented the result of living in accordance with values-based, goal-oriented decisions. And so the remainder of this book, we're going to describe how you can do the same. Regardless of where you are today, regardless of what decisions you have made in the past, regardless of what conditions you are living in at present, you have the power within to begin sowing seeds for a brighter future. Remember that every decision comes with an opportunity cost. Every decision. So to the extent that you adhere to a disciplined, deliberate, strategic path, you can build a life of significance, of relevance, and meaning. So in moving forward, begin by asking the types of Socratic questions that will lead to the future that you want to create. Who are your avatars? Who, what would they expect of you? In what ways are the decisions you are making today leading you closer to earning support tomorrow? You see, if you start asking those questions right now, you can really begin to hone in on a craft. Hone in on a craft that will change your life. Now, in the CDs that accompany the course that's offered in prisons, or if you've just got access to the podcast, you're listening to Earning Freedom, you are going to read or, or hear about individuals that I interviewed on the show. They're telling this same message, whether it's Sean Hopwood, an individual who went to prison with a, multiple bank robberies on his record, meth use, but yet emerged from prison with enormous credentials from uh, an enormous support network, including some of the most prestigious, well-known lawyers in the world, vouching for him, resulting in this, because of the skill set that he got, he was able to get into college, get his degree after serving 10 or 11 years in prison. He was, despite that, he was able to get a good job in the legal community. Despite that, he, despite his background, he was able to get a full scholarship from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and get into the University of Washington Law School. And then after graduating law school, persuade the Washington State Bar to admit him. And after he's got his law, but even before that, he was hired as a clerk for the second highest court in the United States, which is effectively means the second highest court in the world for the Washington, the D.C. Circuit Court in Washington, D.C., an appellate court. And now Sean's a professor at Georgetown Law School, right? He's got a two-year fellowship where he is helping people learn the law while simultaneously doing what he loves, which is representing indigent people in prison. I mean, that's a mastermind. That's a guy who knows how to prepare for success. And my question for you is, do you want to be successful like Sean Hopwood? Or do you want to endure the challenges that complicate the life, lives of so many of our brothers who get out of prison, can't find a job, struggle with homelessness, find themselves back in the criminal justice system, dealing, as Jay-Z said, dealing with the riffraff again, going through the challenges, never being able to gain traction. See, my passion is to help you find your way through this challenge. My passion is to help you not emerge with a minimum wage job, but emerge with a massive support system and massive opportunities so that you can live a life of relevance and meaning and contribution, so that you can live success as you define success. There are a lot of guys around you right now who are talking about what they're going to have. Don't be the one who talks about it. As a great, I don't remember his name, but a great basketball coach, maybe it was Lou Holtz, said, I don't know if it was Lou Holtz who said something along the lines of this, um, the will to succeed is important, but not nearly as important as the will to prepare to succeed. How much are you preparing? How much did you prepare yesterday? On a scale of 1 to 10, how much did you prepare yesterday? Ask yourself that. And then 
If it's not a 10, then ask yourself the next question. What would it take to make it a 10? Be a 10. Be everything that you can be. Overcome prison and you can overcome anything. And you may have a life sentence today, but you can overcome that if you can persuade people why you're worthy of a, of a better opportunity. And so I, I wanted to share this message with you. This is the, uh, I think it's the seventh episode. I, I don't know, but it'll be on the show notes of our program. Uh, it's about a 20-minute episode every day. So I'll be back tomorrow with the next phase. I think we're going to move into chapter three tomorrow of the book. Yes, I am. I'm going to be talking about the halfway house tomorrow, what happened after I transitioned from the prison to the halfway house. And I'm going to tell you about how those decisions, again, in prison, translated into my success when I got out. And I want you to pay attention to it because I want that same level of success or a higher level of success for you. If you want a free digital download of this book, just visit my website, michaelsantos.com. Give me your email address and one will go out automatically, instantaneously. If you're uh, watching on YouTube or iTunes or whatever, please subscribe to the show. Please rate and review the show. You know, help me be- get traction. Help me inspire more people to reach their highest potential. Like me on Facebook. I'm Michael Santos with michaelsantos.com. And I look forward to bringing you another episode tomorrow on Michael San- on What is it? What are my shows? Earning Freedom on iTunes or uh, Success After Prison. Thanks very much. We'll be back tomorrow.